It's Thomas Mulready from CoolCleveland.com. We are here with Judge Terry Jameson. Thank you so much for coming by on this beautiful summer night here in Lakewood. Yes. Talk about the judicial race we have before us here in Ohio. It, it's, this is almost historic, is it not? I think it is historic. This is the first time you've had three women on the Democratic ticket for judicial, uh, for justice for the Supreme Court. First, we have uh, Justice Jennifer Bruner, uh, who is a Democrat that will be running against a Republican Sharon Kennedy for the Chief Justice seat. The Chief Justice is retiring, so it is considered an open seat. One of them will win, and the governor will have a short amount of time to appoint to the vacancy that they leave. The next race is mine which uh, the term begins on January the 1st, 2023. And I'm running against Patrick F. Fisher. Uh, he is a current justice, he's Republican. I am the Democrat in that race. Um, with a win, we become a 4-3 Democratic majority on the court. Then we have Justice, uh, justice Pat DeWine, who is running against Democrat Marilyn Zayas. And if Judge Zayas is elected, we would have a 5-2 Democratic majority on the court. This will be the first year in history that you will see Democrat or Republican on the ballot for the Supreme Court races and the Ohio Court of Appeals races. Make sure that you look before you vote and I'm asking you to vote Judge Terry Jameson on the road to justice for Ohioans. Right. How important is this Supreme Court? They've made some really important decisions here recently and yes. the Democrats have been outvoted and they've gone along with the Republican legislature, the Republican governor, but the, the Supreme Court of Ohio has a chance to be a balancing factor here in Ohio, correct? Oh yes it does. Um, you saw this in the redistricting and the decisions that came up with a 4-3 majority with the Chief Justice joining the three Democrats on the court to make that majority. She can't be there this time. So you need to make sure that when you're thinking about this redistricting issue, you understand that it will come back up in 2024. This is not a settled issue. The map that you are using currently is for this election, and then in 24, we will look at redistricting again. We've seen um, the trigger bill that went into effect as soon as the Dobbs decision came down, overturning Roe versus Wade. That issue is coming down to the state court. And regardless to how you feel about abortion, the bigger issue is whether or not you want someone viewing your medical records and you want legislature making medical decisions for you. In the minority community, in the black community, black women die three to one times more than Caucasian women in, uh, in birth. So if they don't have access to these procedures, ectopic pregnancies are not included in that bill. Um, if you have a child that has died in your womb, they're asking you to carry that child to term rather than having a medical procedure. It's up to you and your doctor to determine what's best for your medical health. We also have a higher mortality rate for black babies in Ohio. And we can't say that they're not able to get the same medical care. But what we're saying is we see the statistics and we see who it's focused on. As a black woman myself, I've lost a grandchild uh, in 2020 during the pandemic. We lost one of our great grandchildren that uh, was premature and just didn't survive. So we understand that these things are important, they're critical issues, and that we need to be prepared to vote on those issues, looking at it under the law. We need equal justice under the law for everyone. 
So redistricting is one of the huge ones that's coming before the Supreme Court. In abortion is another one that's coming between. Uh, and to not the just Supreme abortion, Court. but right. it's play, there's also in Clarence Thomas's concurring opinion in Dobbs, he asked the Supreme Court to look at a case called Griswold, which also includes contraception. You as a family should be able to determine what size family you want. So contraception is not something that legislature or the court should be determining for a family. What else do you think is going to come before the Supreme Court? Do you have an idea of cases that, that are, are sort of headed your way? Uh, well, I think also anytime we're looking, I sit on the 10th District Court of Appeals currently, and we have statewide jurisdiction on workers' compensation, workers' rights. We, we know that the data says that in civil lawsuits, people of lower economic status and minorities get lower verdicts in their judgments, uh, even in civil cases. We have the criminal sentencing database that uh, has been started. And my opponent, Pat Fisher, voted against it. So he was not even in favor of gathering the statistics. So that means you're not concerned ab about justice being applied equally because all the data will show is whether that's being done. And that's what we need the public to be able to see. Thank you so much for, for all your, your hard work. Thank you for coming out here tonight and talking with us. Best of luck with your campaign. Thank, Thank you, Judge. Thank you so much. Thank Vote you so much. Judge Jameson on <laughs> November 8th. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hey, it's Thomas Mulready from Cool Cleveland. Have a great week in Cool Cleveland.